I was swimming the other day on Skiros Island with friends and family. As I joined the conversation, there was a new guy talking to the others. Since we were just bodiless heads sticking out of the sea, and I was facing the sun, I struggled to make out what he looked like in case I didn't know him. He's probably a friend of theirs whom I haven't met, I thought to myself, just as my brother-in-law was about to introduce us. This new friend looks at me and asks, ah, you are a YouTuber, right? Obviously, I was surprised. Hmm, now, is that good or bad? How do they know I'm making silly, inconsistent videos on YouTube? And have I reached the point where I can add that label to my social media profiles? He could tell I didn't expect that. No worries, I'm a digital marketer myself, he responded, as I was having trouble finding the right words to answer his question. Okay, now we can cut to the chase, since I know he understood the lingo and the shenanigans of working online. Sure, I was happy to call myself a YouTuber, among all the other things I've called myself. I wouldn't say it's my full-time job by now, but given how much time I'm spending on this craft, I might as well get the credit of calling myself a middle-aged YouTuber. Well, yes, I said, I do make videos on YouTube. To which he responded, investing and the like, right? Oh boy, now we are talking. <laughs> At first I thought he had come across my videos about Skiros, since we were on the beautiful Greek island. People visiting the island might have searched YouTube for videos, and there's a small chance he landed on one of my Skiros videos. But investing? That's the first thing we associate with me? That means you have watched more than one video of mine and dug deeper into my background. On hearing the word investing, <laughs> my brother-in-law and friends quickly went the other way, laughing. Investing? <laughs> you two talk to each other. We'll stick to fishing stories. I get it. Investing, make money and gambling all carry a strange aura. No wonder these are called grey markets in SEO, as most scams are in these industries and people don't feel comfortable talking about money. Thankfully, this digital marketer is actually an active SEO advisor, which made me open up way quicker than if I were explaining what I do for a living to my grandma, if she were still alive. It turns out this guy has been freelancing as an SEO expert for popular gambling operators in Greece, after starting as a web designer following his studies as a mathematician. Due to these partnerships with these companies, we had more common ground connect and totally clicked. Well, <laughs> at least that's how I felt. I hope he did too. We spent the following hour discussing gambling, cryptocurrencies and how SEO is changing due to artificial intelligence, to the point where he might have to fall back to web design if things get much worse. We shared the sentiment about how the internet is changing and what it means for our line of work, as I'm also shifting my career toward building my personal brand, instead of living as a lazy, fully dependent on Google, living under the radar, semi-retired web publisher. He wasn't a family friend though. I was completely wrong about that. He ended up with us because his little daughter had met our friend's kids and was having fun playing together at the beach. As a family man, you go where your kids go. We could have talked for hours, but time flew and you had to go back home. We said our goodbyes and set a date for the next day to meet at the same beach, as we obviously had a lot more to talk about and <laughs> our kids to play with. But he was in his last days of vacation on the island, so I figured we might not run into each other as he would likely want to spend more time with his family instead of a total stranger. <laughs> we'll talk online, he said as we were leaving. Sure, we'll meet in the digital world, I replied realizing I hadn't asked for any of his contact details. <laughs> Typical introverted Jim. Well, he knows my YouTube channel, so that's a point of contact, I figured. 
The very next morning, as I was watering the plants, I got a notification. It was him texting me on Instagram at 7 a.m. He had been following me there for who knows how long, so I could run a background check on his profile. Not that I needed to, as I trusted the guy. But as a content creator, you often check your new followers' profile, especially when you are just a small fish in a giant pond, like me. Here, I had a few more reasons to do that. After all, we seemed to have a lot in common. We texted back and forth for a few minutes, but unfortunately, we didn't meet again before he and his family left the island. But they will be back and, surprisingly, will become neighbors soon enough as they are building their summer house close to ours. They first visited Skiros Island in 2014 and have been coming here every summer since then. That's a very common story I have heard over the years from quite a few people who have visited this island in Greece. Of course, not everyone decides to build a house here, <laughs> but it surely makes people reconsider their way of living and life choices. I certainly have, as I have talked about in my YouTube videos. <laughs> After all, I am a YouTuber.